Today's video is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook and a 30-day trial by heading over to audibletrial.com slash Greg's Gadgets. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and WWDC was just announced to take place on June 3rd in San Jose. And at this event, Apple is expected to announce some new software for iOS 13 for Mac OS. 10.15 and possibly even some new hardware announcements with the announcements of the brand new Mac Pro, the 16.5 inch MacBook Pro, and maybe some other surprises along the way. So let's get into the video with a breakdown of what sort of things we can expect Apple to announce at the WWDC keynote. And let's start with the software because that is the guaranteed thing that will definitely be at the keynote this year. And every WWDC, the one thing you can always expect is a new version of iOS. So at last year's event, Apple announced iOS 12, and iOS 12 was a bit of a different release in terms of iOS versions because it wasn't focusing on new features. It was more of a focus on fixing reliability and performance with iOS. All of the major changes that Apple was planning to ship with iOS 12 was pushed back to this year with the release of iOS 13. So we can expect some pretty major and radical redesigns to the way that iOS works. And that includes a brand new springboard design, a fresh take on the home screen and the way you interact with your iPhone. Now, aside from the fact that there are plenty of rumors that Springboard is getting a brand new look, we really don't know the finer details of how iOS 13 will look, if it will borrow some elements from Android, if it will include widgets on the home screen, if it will include an app drawer. Those finer details are still up in the air. All we really know is that iOS 13 will be focused on adding a redesign to iOS. And I think we can pretty much clearly see this with the announcement of WWDC. If you look at all of these artworks, you can see that they kind of have a really dark background. So it kind of supports my theory that iOS 13 will have a dark mode if these announcements are anything to go by. We've also heard rumors that iOS 13 will include some enhanced multitasking features, so maybe some split screen multitasking, especially on the bigger iPhones, and hopefully something with picture and picture video support. Apple is also supposedly working on a revamped files app and live photos are said to be doubling in length from three seconds all the way up to six seconds and also getting some other features like Google's Top Shot mode where it will help you select the best photo as it captures an extended exposure range. Now we also know that iOS 13 isn't exclusive to the iPhone, it's also coming out on the iPad as well. And this year, there are a lot of rumors that iOS 13 will include a major rework for the iPad. And prominent developer Steve Trotten Smith on Twitter has said that the next version of iOS 13 on iPad will include some new enhancements to the way that the UI works, to the way that folders work, and a general redesign that will make it look different than what we're used to seeing on the current generations of iPads, and maybe even a different UI layer than what we would see on an iPhone. Of course, this next generation of iOS 13 for the iPads is going to focus more on pro features as well. And one of the big rumors is that iOS 13 on iPads will include even more enhanced support for multitasking as well as multiple windows or multiple tabs for the same exact app. Now moving away from iOS 13, the next version of Mac OS 10.15 should be one of the biggest Mac releases we've had in years. And that's mostly because this year with Mac OS 10.15 or whatever they end up calling it when it's finally announced, is that developers will be able to port their iPad apps to the Macintosh. Apple gave us a little bit of a sneak preak last year with Mac OS Mojave by adding certain apps that were developed on iOS, like the news app, the stock apps, and the home app. This was kind of called Project Marzipan behind the scenes, although we didn't really get an official name. But last year, Apple said that they would open up this capability to third-party developers this year. So Apple is going to have to lay the groundwork and lay the framework 
for developers to take advantage of that. And with the floodgates open with iPad apps being able to be easily ported over to the Mac, I think we can expect a flood of brand new software making its way to the Mac. And there's still a lot of questions on how iPad apps are going to run on Mac OS and how Apple plans to make sure that this software is quality content. And now that iPad apps are running on the Mac, this also leads to the possibility that we might see the ARM version of MacBooks appearing very soon and with MacBooks running on the ARM architecture with Apple's A-series chips, they should be able to run these iOS apps natively. Of course, we can also expect to see a new version of watchOS from watchOS 5 to watchOS 6. And we really don't know much about watchOS 6. We know a lot more about what's coming in iOS 13 and macOS 10.15. But if I had to guess, I would guess that watchOS 6 will have some more added features dealing with health and exercise. Most notably, I think that we will see multi-user competitions make its way to watchOS 6, but there's still a lot of open questions on what other software enhancements Apple can add to watchOS. Every year they seem to open up the app platform a little bit more to give developers some more control. So I'm expecting to see more third-party developer control on what they can do with their apps. I think we can expect to see some brand new watch faces, especially the Series 4 watch. Having that bigger display, we can probably expect that to take advantage and make some more exclusive watch faces for the bigger size class of the Series 4 Apple Watch. And there's still a lot of other open questions like will Apple finally add an always on display to watch OS? Will Apple be adding any other health benefits that don't require new hardware, maybe a sleep tracking app. But watchOS 6 is still an open book on what they will add, so hopefully we see some really cool improvements there. And of course, on June 3rd, if you are in the developer beta program, you can also expect to see the beta versions announced and released for Mac OS, for iOS, and of course, watch OS. Now, if you're interested in new software, you might also be interested in listening to a new audiobook from Audible. Audible is giving viewers of Greg's Gadgets a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to check out their service. And if you need an audiobook recommendation, if you're watching this, you're probably very interested in Apple. And if you want to know more about the man who founded Apple, I would recommend checking out the book Becoming Steve Jobs on Audible. It is a great listen. So you can go to audibletrial.com slash Greg's Gadgets or just click the link in the description of this video to get a free audiobook and a 30-day trial of Audible. And thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. Now what about hardware? Will we see any new hardware being announced at Apple's WWDC event? There's always the off chance that we won't see any new hardware announcements at WWDC, especially considering this is a developers conference. Although this year I do think there are some good possibilities for new Mac hardware to make an appearance at this event. Most notably because this is a developer conference with a lot of pros in the audience, I think we can finally see a preview or an announcement of the brand new modular Mac Pro. And based on what we're hearing for the modular Mac Pro, it sounds like it's going to be a radical redesign rather than just a basic desktop tower running Mac OS with different components, with maybe stackable components that you can add on your own with different configurations for the motherboard and the RAM and the storage, each kind of enclosed in its own little bay. It's sounding very, very interesting, if not really over-engineered. If Apple is announcing a new Mac Pro, we can also expect to see a new Pro display to go alongside of it. And that Mac display is rumored to be a 32 inch display, maybe going with a two by one aspect ratio, but also having a 6K resolution. So you're going to get this 32 inch, very big display with a really, really high resolution, probably running over Thunderbolt 3 to the Mac Pro. This Pro display is also said to feature a mini LED backlight, which is really supposed to improve the picture quality that is available on this display. As for other hardware, we might also see that rumored new MacBook Pro with a 16.5 inch display. So if it is a 16.5 inch display, I think we can expect to see it in a similar body to the current 15 inch line of laptops, 
just with a bezel-less 16.5 inch display. Obviously we can expect really beefy CPUs inside of it, some better graphics cards with AMD's new line of graphics. And of course we should see RAM configurations and even the 13 inch is rumored to be getting a RAM configuration with up to 32 gigabytes where it's currently limited right now to only 16 gigabytes. But there's still a lot of open questions on this new MacBook Pro as well. We've only heard some initial leaks out of the design department from Ming-Chi Kuo. So we still don't know if Apple's going to ship the third generation butterfly keyboard with it or redesign that keyboard. We have heard some issues of even the third generation butterfly keyboard facing some stuck keys. We also don't know if Apple's going to stick with the touch bar or finally abandon it. And there's also other things about the design, like some people have been calling for a thicker MacBook Pro that could handle more heat. So maybe Apple might reverse step. Maybe they will make a thicker computer to really target a pro audience. All right, everyone, but enough about what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What are you excited to see about this year at WWDC? Are you excited for iOS 13? Are you excited for Mac OS 10.15? Are you excited for Watch OS 6? Or are you more excited for the possibility of new hardware, a new Mac Pro? If you want to support this channel in any way, make sure you check out that link in the description for the free Audible trial. And as always, if you like the video, make sure you give me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.